Hey, Power Rappers. Welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. My name is Nate Hallowell. I'm a senior trainer at Pragmatic Works. And today we're going to be talking about how to create deep links to our Canvas applications and specifically how to use parameters to determine which screen we should open to and in this case, which item we should automatically load into a form. So going into the Canvas application, uh, simple Canvas app here to create and track PTO requests. So as a user, I can come in and click new request. And for today's demo, let's go ahead and call this Nate needs a vacation. Now the start date will say I need the 22nd and I'm going to return to work on the 23rd. I just need one day auto calculate the total hours there. And again, for today's demonstration, I'm obviously going to make myself the approver and I'll submit that. Now, the reason I'm making myself the approver is that I also have a power automate flow. So let's go take a look at that. And what that's going to do is simply just wait for a new record to be added to our SharePoint list. And when that happens, it's going to send an email to the approver. Now, in this case, let's say we want to track and, you know, uh, approve and reject and add notes. We want to do all of that from inside the Canvas app. So if I zoom in here, let's take a look at this flow. And when a new item is created in our PTO request list, we're going to send it to the email of the approver. And if I want to see what this hyperlink is, I'll go ahead and hit this HTML tag here. And we'll see that it's just right now the base URL of our Canvas application. Now let's see what that email looks like just came through. And when a, uh, a new record is added, it's going to send it to the approver. And please click here to view and respond to this request. Now, as the approver, I need to open up the app and then I need to go and approve slash reject. And then I need to find that actual item that came through. Nate needs a vacation. What if I want to create a screen just for the approvers that when they click that hyperlink, it's going to automatically open the app to that specific request and allow them to approve or reject it. So that is what we are going to use our parameters and our deep linking for. So before we dive right in and start adding different parameters, um, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at really what a URL is and how we can structure it. So in the example of my flow, you saw the entire base link of my Canvas app. So for simplicity's sake, let's just say the URL is www.myapp.com. Right, we have a bunch of app IDs and tenant IDs and all that stuff, but we're going to ignore that just for, for this purpose right here. Now, the way we split up a URL and add a parameter to this URL is to simply just do a question mark. This tells the browser that, okay, myapp.com is the base URL, and then there's some more parameters coming. Now we can name our parameters whatever we want. Let's say we want to, uh, first we need to identify if this URL means that the approver is opening this, this link. So we'll say approval equals one. We'll go with that zero in one, you know, Boolean true false here. So approval is equal to one. And then if we want to add another parameter, it's not with another question mark. The question mark just tells the URL that there's parameters coming. And then we can start identifying those parameters. And the way that we split them and add another one is with an ampersand. So we'll say and item ID is equal to, and then we'll put the ID from that actual request in the URL. So that's kind of what the structure of this URL is going to look like. Now let's go back and put that actually into our URL. So I'm going to leave that myapp.com. That part is, is fake. And I'm going to just control C. I'm going to copy that and let's go back to our power automate flow. So we have the base URL for our app and then we can just add our parameters to this. So right after the end, right before the double quotes there, I'm just going to paste in those parameters that I wrote. Now they don't mean anything yet and they're not really technically going to work yet. Uh, it's still not going to stop the browser from loading the app though. If I just copy this whole thing right here, it's still going to take me to that Canvas application. So let's test that out. I'm going to paste that in right there. And there we go. It takes me to the PTO request and approval app. 
But I want to actually tell the app, okay, if there are some parameters and if the parameter that we called approval is equal to one, then I want to go to a different screen. So let's take a look at how to do that. If I go back to my Canvas application, um, let's go to the app where we have all different properties like you know, we're probably used to at this point the on start property. So what to do when the app loads. But before we do that, there's actually the default property that will show up here when you select app is actually the start screen. And that's going to tell Power Apps which screen to open up to. Now, if we don't specify which screen to open up to, it's always going to go to that default home screen or that default first screen in your tree view. But we can override that and we're going to use what's called the param function the parameter function so for the start screen let's say let's do a conditional if statement here so we're going to say if and then let's look um, at the parameter and see if it exists first right because if a user is just coming here to submit a request there's not going to be an approval parameter so we'll say if param and the name of our parameter is approval now I want to say if that is blank meaning there is no approval parameter listed so I'm gonna go before my param and just do a simple is blank so that's saying if the approval parameter is blank then the true value of this if statement and again we're on the start screen property so the true value here needs to be a screen that we direct the app to so if that's blank just go to scr home if that is not blank then which screen should we go to well if it's not blank let's go to scr approval now scr approve reject is the name of my screen and if we go take a look at that screen, we'll see that it's simply just a uh, just a form. There's no gallery for the approver to select from. Um, you know, it just is going to take them right to the form, and we have to identify okay which item do we want to put in this form. If we go up to play, it's just going to say no item to display because this is an edit form, and we have not yet told Power Apps which item we want to edit. And we are going to also use another parameter to do that. So let's go back to the drawing board with our Power Automate flow. And if I go back to my flow, too many tabs open. Here it is. So we've got approval is equal to one. So that's going to not be blank. And it's going to go to the approval screen. Now for the item ID, that's the name of our parameter. And now we need to provide it with a value. So let's give it the item ID from when the item is created. So I'm going to go over to my dynamic content window, search for ID. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's go back to our application. So we've identified is the parameter approval blank or not. And if it is, go to the home screen. If it's not blank, go to this SCR approve reject screen which simply has the form now we need a way to uh, create some sort of variable to look up that other parameter the ID so let's go back to the app and to do this let's create a global variable that we can use across any screen in the application and we're going to do that in the on start property so on start let's do another if statement let's say if is blank param same structure as before so if that's blank and we called that uh, item ID so item ID if that is blank then do nothing so I can say do nothing by just typing false if that is not blank then let's set a variable to store that record uh, that we want to approve or reject. So I'm going to say set and we'll name our variable now. So let's say var item ID and the value that we want to set that to 
is we need to take our parameter, which is going to contain the ID, and we need to go look up to that SharePoint list and grab that record. So we're going to do a lookup statement, and we're going to look up to our SharePoint list, which is called PTO request. And the condition by which to look up is where the ID of the item in SharePoint is equal to our parameter. Now, one thing to point out is that these parameters are always going to be in the URL as strings. And since the ID field of a SharePoint list is a number, we need to just convert that ID to a number or that string to a number. So I'm going to do a value function, which is going to convert any string that I give it to a number. And we want the value from param item ID. And then what do we want to return from that lookup? We want to return this record. So let's go ahead and I'm going to format this just so that you can see the code and it's a little bit easier to read and we'll walk through it. So if item ID is blank, if there is no item ID parameter, do nothing. If it's not blank, then we want to set a variable called var item ID and the value for that uh, variable that we're setting is an entire record. We're going to look up to the PTO request where the ID of the item in the SharePoint list is equal to our item ID parameter and return that entire record. Now I can go down to my SCR approve reject screen where we currently, if I go into play mode, we have no item that we've told this form. So I'm going to go into the form, go to the item property, and we're just going to point to var item ID. Now if I go to play, still no item to display because we have not loaded the app with that parameter. So let's see if this works. These two things in conjunction here. Again, we have the start screen property, which is going to either take us to the home screen or it's going to take us to the approval screen. And then if we go to the approval screen, it is also going to load up that item into a variable for us. So let's go ahead. Let's publish this application and let's test this out and see if it works. That's the base URL for our app. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now let's go ahead and actually submit a new request. So I'm going to call this testing deep link. None of these are, are required fields, so I'm just going to leave them blank for the purposes of time. Let's submit this record. And there we go. I got the email. So let's take a look. Here's my email. And let's hover over this, make sure we've got the flow working. So approval equals one and item ID equals 19. Perfect. So if I click this, it should open up right to a new tab. There's my item testing deep link. Perfect. So I can go ahead and approve this and submit. And there we go. That is how you create deep links to your Canvas application and how you can launch it open to any specific page and preload an item that you want to approve or reject. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, this can apply to so many different use cases. It doesn't just have to be approvals. But um, yeah, if you found this helpful, like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you again in the next one.